Chapter 8, Poppy and Papa. From the moment Lungwort pulled the curtain across the entrance to his boot study, he did not show himself. When inquiries were made, the curtain was opened by Sweet Cicely, but merely a fraction. Looking out just long enough to say, he's not well. She would draw the curtain closed. Now, Poppy stood before the study, working up the courage to speak to him. She kept asking herself, as she already had done a hundred times, if she really wanted to go to Newhouse, the answer, plain and simple, was no. Just the thought frightened her, but still, she was convinced it was the only way to prove that she and Ragweed were not really the cause of Mr. Ocox's refusal. Nonetheless, she feared that when she told her father about her intentions, he would be displeased. <sighs> With a sigh, she braced herself and called, Papa? Her mother peeked out from the curtain. He's not, oh, Poppy, it's you. Mama, Poppy said, can I speak to Papa, please? Well, if anyone, just make it brief. Poppy slipped into the boot. Is he still ill? She whispered. Sweet Cicely nodded. I've never seen him looking so poorly. He lies there whimpering, though every once in a while, he'll shake his head and sob. What are we going to do? Or it's all over with us now. Poppy's heart sank. Poppy, sweet Cicely continued, I do hope you're going to tell him something that will cheer him up. I'm not sure I will, Poppy confessed. Her mother sniffed. Well then, you best know what else he keeps saying. Oh? He says, if only Ragweed and Poppy had asked permission. Poppy's heart sank even further. And I must agree with him, sweet Cicely went on. Well, if you insist on seeing him, come along. Lungwort had curled himself into the absolute toe of the boot, the gloomiest part. His tail was wrapped around his feet. His whiskers were limp. His front paws were in constant motion as if squeezing a sponge. Poppy thought his fur had grown grayer too. Sweet Cicely leaned over him. Longwort, dearest, it's Poppy come to visit. Longwort shook his head and mumbled as if holding an argument with himself. Poppy came forward. Papa, she called. Lungwort looked up and stared fixedly at his daughter. Doomed, he said mournfully. Who is? The whole family. But if rules aren't followed, he began, but stopped to shake his head. Nope, nope, it's my fault. What do you mean? If I had raised you properly, you would have never gone to Baynock Hill without asking permission, and none of this would have happened. I accept full responsibility. His tail swished in dismay, and he started squeezing his paws again. Poppy appealed to Sweet Cicely with a look, but her mother was gazing pitifully at Lungwort. Papa, Poppy said, I have an idea that there may be another reason why Mr. Ocox refused us. Lungwort sniffed. You're too young to have ideas. Poppy didn't protest, but she pressed on. I think Mr. Ocox refused permission because something about Newhouse, something he doesn't want us to know. Lungwort considered his daughter for a moment. <clears throat> Suddenly, his whiskers stiffened, and he bared his front teeth. That ragweed, he snarled with anger. He twisted your mind. He's the cause of all of this. Poppy stepped back as though struck, but she managed to say, I'm going to find out. How? I'll go to New House. Lungwort turned limp again. Why tell me? He said with a shrug. You don't care what I think. You'll go anyway. Poppy wanted to say something kindly, but the words would not come. Instead, after a painful silence, she turned to go. Suddenly, Lungwort cried. Poppy. Yes, Papa? Look out for porcupines. Poppy lay upon the floor of her log cabin syrup room and studied a map of the area. As far as she could see, there was three ways to reach New House. The easiest way would be to go along the tar road. 
But if she took that route, she'd be traveling in the open. That was reason enough to rule the tar road out. The longest way would be to go around the marsh, but that meant going over Bainak Hill, and it held too many painful memories and fears connected to Ragweed's death. No, Poppy was not ready to go there again, not yet. Her third choice was Dimwood Forest. Few mice who had ventured in had returned to tell of their experiences. Even so, the dark woods seemed to offer real advantages. She could travel midday, even in bright sun. Mr. Ocox and most other creatures would be asleep then. And if and when the need arose, the same light would enable her to find a hiding place. If the forest had anything, Poppy assumed, it would be plenty of hiding places. She would go that way. Poppy told only Basil about her plans. If she succeeded in discovering the real reason for Mr. Ocox's refusal, there would be time enough to let everybody know. On the other hand, if she discovered nothing, who would know or care if she disappeared? She asked Basil to meet her at the back steps of Grey House when the sun was at the highest the next day. The morning she mingled with the family so none would suspect what she was up to. But with so many convinced that she was the cause of the crisis, the hostility made it too painful to wait. Some time before her appointment with Basil, she was pacing by the back steps, ready to go. I'm leaving right now, Poppy announced as soon as her cousin appeared. You forgot something, he said. What? This. Basil held out Ragweed's earring. For courage, he said. Poppy held still while her cousin aff gently affixed the earring, and when she shook her head, it tickled her ear. I need a nuzzle, she said, caught in a swell of emotion. As they nuzzled, Basil, Basil whispered, I could go with you. Poppy broke away. It has to just be me, she said, and she leaped off the back steps. Why? If I'm the one who caused this mess, she called, it has to be me who sorts it out. Good luck, Basil cried after her. Poppy, not wanting to look back because she thought it might make her lose heart, dashed away. <clears throat> this would be a good time that you can go to the map um, on, and look at the ways that she is going to go. You could also um, think about the front cover. You can see, at first, we wondered who this mouse was because it has an earring. Now we know it's Poppy. We know how she got the earring and why she's wearing it here. All right. Chapter eight. Answer your questions. <laughs>